Hi, brethren. It's Lisa with Sabbath Seekers. I pray you're all well from the weather that happened uh, last night. It was a little scary with all the tornado watches. Anything like that, that that comes up that you need to be aware of, I'll definitely put it um, on the community page as I did last night. So I pray you are all well. As promised, I wanted to come and do a Daniel study with you. All this was prompted. Um, I had been studying, you know, the scriptures in Daniel and in several other places, but, and I don't base everything on dreams, um, but I know that the Holy Spirit teaches us. And so we take those things that we see in our dreams and we go to the Word of God for the answers for our father is the word so if you do not remember I'll just tell you in short I had a dream where I was shown um, like Babylonian things altars to other gods um, I was shown many things but I was also given a word and it was pronounced a mercy is a mercy is and I asked in the dream, I said, what is a mercy is? And I thought in the dream that they were a people. I, you know how in dreams, if you have a dream, you somehow, somehow you have a, a knowing that it is talking about a certain thing. And it was, to me, it was a people. And I said, where did the, where did a mercy is come from? And I heard they came from Babylon. And so I asked again, and I received the same answer. What is a mercy is? Where did they come from? Babylon. I then begin to see, you know, when we think of the altars that people serve, you know, they built altars to certain things or certain gods. But in this dream, I saw the Babylonian gods and the Babylonian gods they served in the altars. I saw... And this is in many countries, but I saw courthouses, I saw universities, and the main universities, and I heard the word ivy, so I had looked up all of these things, but I was, these are, you know, altars, uh, so to speak, in a spiritual aspect, they may be, they're built to the Babylonian gods, they're built in, I guess, the specifications or certain things like the steps. We read in the Bible where it says, do not build steps up to your altars. You're to build the altars from the earth. You're not to make anything of hewn stone. Don't build steps up to the altar so someone doesn't discover your nakedness. Well, I saw these places with these steps that, I mean, <laughs> lots of steps that led up to the door. And we see these in, you know, uh, certain buildings in our country and in other countries it's not just in the u.s just like the statue of liberty is not just in the u.s it's um in many places so i knew that this was a thing where i wanted to find out first of all where um a mercy is originated where it came from and i had a subscriber send me some information from the britannica uh encyclopedia Actually, I looked that up, but they had sent me some information, and I ended up finding it in Britannica. There was a land um, in the United Kingdom, which is the United Kingdom today, uh, Mercia's, right below, right below what was known as the Britons and Wessex, right like sandwiched in between the two. And I'll show you a map of that. So... I really was curious, um, and I had been uh, curious about the Daniel study, so I went in to do the study, and what we're going to do is we're going to put this in parts. If you would like to study with me, you're more than welcome. I cannot say uh, right now that I have all the answers, or no one does, but the Lord is leading us to understand. And I think that this is a pivotal time in the history of the earth where we are being led to understand these things. 
Um, the scriptures in John says the Holy Spirit will come and he will teach you all things. And as we study the word and we're in prayer and building our relationship and drawing close to the Lord, that is exactly what is happening. So I want to begin with some pivotal scriptures. If you can turn to Daniel 7. Daniel chapter 7, we're going to focus in to begin with on verses 23 and 24 and a couple of scriptures in Revelation 13. Well, let's play, pay close attention to what these particular scriptures are telling us. In Daniel 7, verse 23, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. Verse 24. And the ten horns out of this kingdom, the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. So in this we learn that there are four kingdoms. If we look at verse 17 in chapter 7 of Daniel, these are the great beast, which are four. There are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. So this is the fourth king, the fourth kingdom upon the earth. And it is diverse from all the kingdoms, and it devours the whole earth. So there are ten horns out of this particular fourth kingdom. In verse 24, we see that. And there are ten kings in this fourth kingdom that shall arise. But a little horn, another shall rise after them. And as you go along with me in the study, you will know that this other that rises after them is that little horn. And it is diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. If we go now to Revelation chapter 13, and we read verses 1 and 2 in particular. Pay attention to the attributes of this beast, because I will be getting into this. And my illustrations, I'm not an artist, uh, a pencil artist or a pen artist, I, I paint. But my illustrations are, are well enough to kind of give us a picture. I like to see things I write things out, I take a lot of notes, and I draw pictures so that I can see and understand. It's just the way I learn. In Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast, a beast, rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. That dragon is explained in, Revel in Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. It's a red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. So when we read in Revelation 13, verse 1, this beast, this beast rises up out of the sea, and it has seven heads and ten horns, and how many crowns? Ten. And upon his heads the name of blasphemy. But we see in verse 2 that this beast has all the attributes of Daniel's seven vision. It has, it looks like a leopard in the body. It has feet like a bear and the mouth of a lion. And of course the dragon 
gave him his power. So if we go back to Daniel 7 and we look at verses 23 and 24, it is this fourth beast at this fourth kingdom upon the earth that is diverse and devours the whole earth. The ten horns that we saw in Revelation chapter 13, it has ten horns and ten crowns upon its head. We see that the ten horns in verse 24 out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, but another shall rise after them. So if you look at Revelation, there is one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his wound was healed. The dragon gave the power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, who can make war with him. This was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and continued forty and two months. So this little horn that comes up out of these ten kings, these ten horns, then when it when the little horn comes up it subdues three kings so if you do that you have ten horns a little horn comes up and that would make eleven and if you subdue if that little horn subdues three kings that leaves eight which reminds me of the scripture revelation 17 chapter 11 and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, he is the eighth, and is of the seven. And in studying the scriptures, I am wondering, I am not saying this is so, but it makes me wonder in the study of the scriptures that even he is the eighth and is of the seven. He's of the entire seven, not just one. So I've heard a lot of um, people talk about, you know, kings and, and even I thought this is a son of one of the kings. This is someone who came up out of one of the kings and he is um, of the seven. He's the eighth and of the seven. But in reading of the scriptures and studying, I want to study with you and discuss the fact that this beast that is, that subdues three and this makes eight total. He's eight and of the seven is of the lion, the bear, the leopard. It's of all of the nations. And he has power over the whole world. That's why Revelation, it looks, has a body of a leopard. It has the mouth like a lion, the body of the leopard, and the feet are like the bear. But when we see this fourth beast come up, this little horn come up, this fourth beast. The Bible tells us that the feet have nails like brass and the mouth has teeth like iron. So if we put this all together and we say, okay, it has the mouth of a lion, speaking blasphemies, but it has iron teeth because it is the fourth beast and it has the feet like the bear but it explains, which we'll get into, that these nails are nails of brass. So I guess my, my, what I want to do is read through Daniel's vision on this particular one, because we're going to go through Daniel 7 through chapter 11 and some chapters in, in Revelation to get the big picture. But to start out with, to actually look at this vision and see specifically some highlighted verses as to what it says and how this relates uh, to the kingdoms uh, in the earth. Looking at the histories of things and things like my dream where I saw uh, Mercias. Mercias was a Babylonian kingdom that actually existed in Europe. And so we want to be able to study the word and see what the Lord is showing us. I'm not saying at this point, this king is coming out of Europe. What I want to understand, I want to understand the scriptures before I speak on anything. I really want to understand, as I'm sure you do. So we're going to learn together. 
how this fourth beast encompasses all the beasts that Daniel saw. So in Daniel chapter 7 verse 1, this was the first year of Belshazzar when he had the dream. Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, was the son of Nebuchadnezzar. We learn that in Daniel chapter 5 verse 18. When Daniel speaks to the king, Belshazzar, and he says, O thou king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. So Belshazzar is Nebuchadnezzar's son, and he has taken um, over in his father's stead. So in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions upon of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. You know, this is what we do now. When the Lord gives us a dream, what is the first thing we do? We wake up and we write the dream down. And we ask and pray for understanding. So, verse 2, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. So here we have the picture of the four beasts, the four winds of heaven strove upon the sea. So we have a spiritual look at what this looks like. You have a war in the earth and the war in the heavens. The scripture tells us this. What is bound on earth is bound in heaven. There's a war going on in both places. So as these four winds of the heaven strove upon the sea, we can see, I can, uh, this is just the way I see it, this spiritual battle in the heavens as it will be on the earth. And there were four great beasts in verse 3 that came up from the sea. And what? They were diverse from one another. The first was like a lion. Remember in Revelation chapter 13, it had a lion's mouth, this beast. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. And I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and was made to stand upon the feet, upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. So there we see that that spiritual matter, a man's heart, was given to this, this lion. And behold, in verse 5, another beast, a second likened to a bear. Again, in Revelation 13, verse 2, we see the feet of a bear. Likened to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs, in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus to it, Arise and devour much flesh. Then Daniel says in verse 6, After this I beheld, and another, like unto a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. And the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. So this was the third kingdom. After this I saw in verse 7 in a night visions, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. So here we see the fourth beast with iron teeth. In Revelation it had a mouth like a lion. So I'm picturing this lion mouth of a lion has acquired these iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue of the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and beheld there came up among them another little horn, from whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. So if you have ten horns, another little horn comes up and 
That's 11, and you subdue 3, you have 8. And this is the final kingdom. He is the 8th and is of the 7 uh, beasts, kingdoms. Well, I'll get into what heads and all that mean um, when the scriptures tell us what the heads are, the nations, the kingdoms, the mountains. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was as white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So we see that this kingdom is here until our Father returns, our Savior returns, the Ancient of Days, and uh, these burning flames and wheels of burning fire, the fiery flame and the wheels of burning fire. It reminds me of the scriptures in Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10, if you want to just take note of that and read that on your own time in your studies. So, in verse 11, it says, I beheld until the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast... They had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So in Daniel chapter 7 verse 17, Daniel is very troubled and he wants to know the whole of the matter. He wants to know the interpretation. And in verse 17, these great beasts were four, are four. They are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. So, taking away all of the things in our mind about the confusion, about, okay, there's all of these horns, and, you know, we're thinking about leaders of different countries and things like this. Let's just look at this with new eyes, like a baby looking at it for the first time. There are, these are great beasts, and they are four. Four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. So when it says those are four kings, we know that that is four kingdoms. Four beasts. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom when the Ancient of Days returns. So then Daniel in verse 19 says he knows the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, was exceedingly dreadful whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and the other which came up, before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. And I beheld the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints the fourth beast in verse 23 shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth diverse from all kingdoms it devours the entire earth but what does it look like it has ten horns, and out of this kingdom, ten kings arise, and this little horn rises after them, and subdues three kingdoms, three kings. So, we see that he is, in fact, the eighth, and is of the seven. So, this beast speaks great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of time. So in Daniel, you know, when he's asking in, in chapter 12, how long will these, till the end of these matters, he is told for a times, times and dividing of time, and that is Daniel chapter 12, verse 7. That was the man clothed in linen, 
which was upon the waters, that said, It shall be for a time, times, and a half a time, when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So what I wanted to do was have a Daniel study with you, discuss these beasts, let's see what they look like, break it down. It ends up in this fourth kingdom being one beast over the whole of the earth, so it has power over all of the earth. And it encompasses all of the kingdoms. The mouth, like a lion, with the iron teeth. The bear, with the feet of the bear, with three ribs in his mouth, and nails like brass. The leopard, with the four wings of a fowl, and four heads. And then, you count that up, and you come up with ten. If you have the standing lion that had the wings plucked off, this man, this lion is stood up like a man. That's how that kingdom is described. Then you have a bear with three ribs in his mouth. That's four. And a leopard with four wings of a fowl. That's five. That equals ten. This fourth beast comes up. These nations are already ten, ten horns. And the fourth kingdom is all encompassing of these nations so it has all of these leopard spots and mouth like a lion and feet like a bear and then this little horn comes up and subdues three of those nations and that makes eight and he is the eighth and is of the seven so I wanted to cover that um, with you first and explain to you why it is I mean this isn't just a study you can have and then the whole of the matter is figured out. We have to start with, you know, one thing after another. One thing at a time. So I wanted to look at these four winds that strove upon the sea and these four kingdoms, these four kings that came up out of the sea. And this is what they look like and compare that to Revelation. When we get to Daniel 8 we are going to understand more about the goat and the ram and in Daniel 9 it gets pretty confusing because it talks about these kings of the north and kings of the south why do you think it's important that we understand these things at this time it's a question I have and I ask father when we see the nations of the world gathering together. I just heard today someone sent me a message where there was an article that was, uh, I'm not sure where it was out of, but it was in Greek. It was in Greek and it was translated to English. And the article tells us that North Korea is sending, I believe it was 50,000 troops, and China, um, I'm not sure the number of troops, but they're all working in accord with Russia, headed to the Ukraine. Why in the world would North Korea, China, and Russia be so concerned with the Ukraine? In my mind, and I could be wrong, but I just, you know, say what I think at the time and what, what comes upon my heart. Where's Ukraine? What is directly below Ukraine right across the Mediterranean Sea. If you look on a world map and you just draw your finger down, you're going to hit Israel. Israel is just the state of Israel. The state of Israel is just below across the Mediterranean Sea uh, from Ukraine. If they are taking over these lands, Zechariah tells us that once you, he'll, he'll make uh, Jerusalem a trembling cup for the nations. So are we seeing these nations who have to take over and subdue this land? The Euphrates were told in scripture to be dried up to make the way for the kings of the east for this battle, this Armageddon. The war is not so much against 
you know, the land or, you know, its power and things like that. But the war is against God Almighty and his people. And so I think about all the things that are in the news. I, I, I guess I have to just um, not be surprised that we are hearing in the news that on the main news channels that there's a possible mothership of aliens and they're disclosing all this information now all of a sudden and we're getting um, together a space force which has already been gotten together but for the war in the heavens who are they making war against they're making war against our God our Father our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is coming they make war with him so I see this as a earthly battle I've seen it in a dream before where the stars there were stars that given had given power to the kings of the earth these are the like fallen ones um, and there was a war both in the earth and in the heavens so I just want to understand and the things that I the Lord shows me or that is teaching me I would like to share with you so we could learn together um, the dream about Amercius and this they came from Babylon I knew that this was a historical matter because I did not know anything about uh, Amercius it was um, not spelled like America nor was it um, pronounced in the dream like America I wanted to know but I was shown, you know, Babylonian things in America. But these things are in, in other countries as well. So I really want to understand the whole of the matter. And it led me to the study. And I'll share just a little clip, um, a screenshot I took of something I found recently. And it just popped up. And, you know, I couldn't find anything on Mercy as before. But it's very difficult to find it. Um, and then it popped up. And you'll see uh, Mercy is in this little screenshot at the end here. Uh, the four kingdoms uh, of England so that there's a lot of information to go over I wanted to go over D Daniel chapter 7 and get your feedback um, to understand especially you know with the scriptures in Daniel 7 24 and 25 and comparing those to Revelation 13 uh, 1 and 2 and the whole of both chapters uh, to get a better picture of what does this beast encompass? I hear a lot of people talking about, you know, when when Jimmy Carter passes away, there's going to be, you know, that's going to be the seven, you know, when that one passes away. I think it's, I think that it's much bigger than that. These are four kingdoms of the whole earth, and there's a spiritual and physical matter to understand about it. Um, it could include those things because we see layers as we, we study the word. We see, you know, spiritual layers, physical layers. But I think this is from the beginning. Daniel saw this from the time of Belshazzar, which was the king that reigned right after his father, Nebuchadnezzar. And this was, you know, close to 2,520 years ago. <laughs> So, um, there's a, there's a lot more that we need to understand and I want to study it with you and see what you have to say about it and what the Lord shows you. So next time we'll be going, I believe we'll be going over the vision of the ram, the goat and the horn to gain better understanding. But if you can be studying the scriptures with me, Daniel 7 through 11 and Revelations I had it written down yesterday. It was Revelations um, 12, 13, and I believe chapter 17, but there's several more. So let me know what you think about these thoughts, what the Lord is showing you. Share any scriptures if you'd like, and let's just enjoy this study together. I believe that we should be focusing on the things that the Father is doing. Um, we are to be aware of things that are going on in the earth, of course. We have to look at the histories and the news that's going on. 
Um, it's really, you know, heartbreaking and grieving to see the things that are going on. It's just so much. It's hard for us to bear all at once, but we were told these things were coming and it is very important for us to cling to the Word of God, to cling to our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, stay in prayer, stay close to Him, just stay close to His Spirit, and make sure that your vessel is full. You can't have a full vessel if you don't seek the Lord in His Word and in prayer and seek a relationship with your Lord and Savior. And um, it's important that we have our, our vessels full of Him. And I pray the Lord be with you. I pray that He pours Himself upon you and fills your vessel. I pray He gives you a thirst and a desire for His Word and prayer time with Him. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say about the Daniel study. This isn't something where I'm teaching anything. This is something where I'm bringing it to you as um, a body of Christ to study together. So these are just my thoughts. And so I want to have a study with you as a body of Christ. Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Shalom.